Hi everyone. While big companies are trying to secure the future of mankind by terraforming Mars, the people on Earth are working tirelessly to find more room to work and live. Welcome to the future. Welcome to Underwater Cities. Underwater Cities was released at Essen 2018 by Delicious Games, a game in which you are balancing your resources trying to make the best out of the available actions. Your cities are built underwater, which give you some unusual resources for games like kelp, biomatter and steel plast. You'll be building tunnels and desalination plants and foremost these cool looking domes. In this video I will first explain you how the game works and then I'll tell you what I think about it. Underwater Cities, here we go! Underwater Cities is played over 10 rounds, in which you will go through three production phases and as many eras and decks of cards. On your turn you choose an action spot and you pay for it with a card. But if the card that you use is the same color as the action you chose, you get to perform the actions on the card as well. You lock that action space and draw back a card. And it's the next player's turn. You go around until each player has performed three turns and then the round ends. Turn order is decided randomly at the beginning of the game, but subsequently in each round you look at who was the highest on the Federation track in the previous round. More on that later. During your actions you're trying to set yourself up to get the most points at the end of the game. And the game comes with a personal scoring cheat sheet card for each player. Each player starts the game with on his board a unique brown metropolis tile. Should you have a network of connecting tunnels leading up to that metropolis, you trigger its effect at the end of the game. You score points for whatever the metropolis tells you. Like this one which will give you points for the amount of tunnels you have built or this one where you get points if you have built a certain amount of cities. Next up is cards that have this end of game timer symbol on them. During the game you collect cards and play them in front of you and those cards trigger at the end of the game. Like this one that tells you you will receive two points for each red dome symbiotic city you have on your board. Next up is connected cities that you have built. Now I will say that word connected a couple of times during this video because it's important. If you don't have a tunnel system connecting to your cities, then you will not have any people, workers go there to produce for you and make those important points for you at the end of the game. So you'll always need a tunnel system that connects to your cities. So you'll get points for each city. Points are worth more if the buildings in there are diversified. So you're gonna want to have all three different kinds of buildings. A green kelp farm, a yellow desalination plant and a white laboratory. And if it's connected to your starting city, you'll gain six points for them. Point four and five on your score sheet will tell you that you can exchange your leftover resources into credits. Every four credits will give you another victory point. And victory points are important because the person with the most victory points is the savior of the overcrowded earth and wins the game. So to get to that end of game scoring you'll go through three eras. Era one will consist of four rounds and era two and era three will both have three rounds. Let's go through a round in detail. As described in the setup part of the rulebook, each player has their own player board with their basic starting city on it. The boards are double sided. The front side is for your first couple of plays and the back side will give you more variety and have more asymmetry. White domes are basic and red ones are fully integrated symbiotic cities and will give you points during the production phases, but are harder to come by. You are randomly given a unique brown metropolis, which gives you a possibility for end game scoring. And two blue metropolis tiles, that give you bonuses if you connect them to your network of tunnels. Each player has their starting resources, a personal assistant with the A symbol on them, and six hand cards. And at the beginning of your turn, and this is important, you will always discard back to your hand limit, which is three. 
So on your turn you can choose one of your hand cards and one action on the main board. Some of them will give you resources, as simple as that. Some of them will allow you to build structures like tunnels, kelp farms, laboratories, desalination plants, cities or combinations of them. Now these actions only give you permission to buy them. You will still need to pay for them. And there is a player info card cheat sheet to tell you what everything costs. The prices for the different things are here depicted in purple. So a kelp farm will cost you one kelp. A tunnel costs one steel plast and a credit. And a symbiotic city costs you one biomatter, one steel plast, one kelp and two credits. This action slot let us do two things. First you've got the A action which means that you can activate with an A, an action card with an A. And we all have an action card at the beginning of the game, your personal assistant. And you'll find more and foremost better action cards during the game. So the A symbol tells you you can activate one of them and you gain the benefits. To show that you have used that action card, you flip it 90 degrees. Action cards that have been turned over cannot be used again until you went through a production phase in which all action cards are turned back into their normal position. You can only have four action cards at any point in the game. So should you get your fifth, you need to get rid of one of the other ones. The S action means that you are allowed to grab one of the special cards that are on display. There are six cards out there that will probably give you a lot of points if you have them on the table at the end of the game. There are 10 of those cards in the box, but for replayability's sake, you only play with six of them each game. But there's also a deck of other great cards you can pick up. Although you can only see one of them, you can choose to grab that card, but you can also discard the one on top, turn over three new ones and pick one of those, discarding the ones you did not choose, and then turn up the new top card. Whichever card you choose, it goes into your hand and now you can play it as if it was any other card. Now, because they are more powerful, they will come at a cost at some point when you play them, but I'll discuss that later when I talk about the cards. During the game, you can upgrade your structures, which are tunnels and buildings. An upgraded building looks like this. You simply add another story. And tunnels, you flip over, revealing the star. To do that, you need science tokens, which you are able to get here. You can either receive two tokens or spend up to three of them to upgrade three buildings or tunnels. Like I said earlier, player order is determined by whoever is furthest on the Federation track. Every time you receive one of these symbols, or maybe two, you can move one or maybe two spaces, which might give you credits, steel plast, or even victory points. At the end of each round though, player order is adjusted accordingly and the Federation track is reset. That's almost all of the action spaces, but some might be still unclear. There is, by the way, a one and two player side of the main board and a three slash four player side of that main board. This one will let you either build a tunnel or give you one credit as well as one step on the Federation track, as well as let you draw two more cards. And this one lets you activate one of your A cards and then you can pay and build a structure so a tunnel or a building, paying its cost, but also adding a science token to upgrade it at the same time. And then there is the last resort and always available action space that lets you pay any card and get two credits and two hand cards. If it helps, if an icon has the downward arrow on it, it means that you're placing and building that tile. If it has the upwards arrow on it, it means that you are upgrading it. So you choose an action spot and pay for it with a card. But if that card is of the same color as the action spot, orange, red or green, then you get to perform the action on the card as well. And this is where the game becomes amazing. All the cards are different, but each one of them so cool in their own way. Some cards have a lightning symbol on them, indicating that you carry out its action only once and immediately. And after playing, you discard the card. Some cards have the A symbol on them, meaning that you can activate them at a later moment when you receive the activate an A card 
action. You will find cards that have the always active symbol on them, giving you a personalized perk. Cards with the turning wheels symbol on them indicate that they will activate during production. And cards with the timer symbol on them activate at the end of the game, as indicated on the scorecard. When you want to play an S card from your hand, you can just do it just like any other card, but there is an extra cost printed on them, mostly one, two or three credits. Just to make sure, if you're choosing an action that does not match the color of the card, you just discard the card. It doesn't matter which card it is, if it's a special card or if it's the best card in the world. If the colors don't match, you only get to perform the action from the main board. But when the colors do match up, you can choose which you want to perform first. Either the action, the complete action on the main board or the complete action on the card. And this is only the beginning of your underwater, well-oiled mega combo engine. Once you've performed the action on the main board and maybe on your card, you draw one card. And now it's very well possible that you have more cards in your hand than the hand limit is, which is fine. You are able to gain more cards during your turn, but at the beginning of your next turn, you'll stick to your hand limit, which is basically three. The some kind of opposite is also true. Should you be able to hold more than uh, three cards in your hand because you've got a card that says you can, then you're just only allowed to draw one card. So in each round, each player gets to do this three times, always choosing an action spot that has not been taken by another player. Unless you're playing a four player game, in which case one player and only one can clone an action space that has been previously been blocked or used by a different player. When the round is over, you'll retrieve your action tiles, you reorder the turn order, reset the federation track and move the error marker up one step. After round four, round seven and round 10, we have a production phase, which is exciting because you're gonna get a lot of stuff. And again, your player eight cheat sheet is going to help you out here. Every tunnel adjacent to a city and each building in a connected city will produce for you. Upgraded tunnels and buildings will produce more. And if you have two upgraded buildings in one city, you will produce even more. Basic cities will not produce, but connected symbiotic cities will give you two points. Some cards and connected metropolises might produce as well. All A action cards are reactivated and ready to use again and you need to yes feed your people each connected city needs to eat a kelp and if you don't have that don't try this at home each city needs to eat a biomatter if you don't have that either then you lose three points for each city that is unfed after the feeding of the people, you will switch out the error cards and give every player three cards. We're almost there. One thing I haven't talked about yet is the government contracts. There are eight of those in the box. At the beginning of the game, you shuffle them and put down three on the board. They give you bonus points and some resources if you are the first to do something special. Like this one, where you will get a free kelp plant, a kelp, and three points if you are the first to connect two metropolises to your start city. Now that's it. Now you should be able to play underwater cities. I love it. I really do. I love the flow. I love the theme, but let me try and break it down for you. You can do whatever you want in this game, but there are some points that will guide you. First off, you have your own end game score metropolis. You don't need to connect to it, but if you do, you will want to make sure you get good points for it. Also, what government contracts are out and which special cards are you maybe able to work with. And then you just play your cards. You will not always be able to do the exact thing you want to. Maybe the perfect action is blocked or maybe you only have cards of one color in your hand. I've played with people who were definitely annoyed by their bad luck of the draw. And of course, that's no fun. But it's definitely part of the game. You just need to find a different way to do what you want it. But also you must be able to throw your plans overboard and go wherever your cards and, and the actions take you. 
On the other hand, you have those moments where it magically all comes together. When you have this combo bonus machine at work, when you activate a bonus card and you get something which you can then use to do something else, you might get cards that trigger off of each other and that is an amazing feeling, even if in the end of the game you did not come in first place. Sometimes you let the card dictate the color of the action you choose. And sometimes it's the other way around. I get excited about things like that. There are almost always, there are almost always multiple ways of getting where you want to go. I like the theme. All the cards represent people. They are specialists in their own area and their own color. They can do other jobs, but then their special knowledge is useless. The orange actions are considered best, but the orange cards are kind of the worst cards in the decks. Green actions, on the other hand, are weak, but those green cards are amazing. So you will find yourself thinking, I want to make this green card work. And it almost doesn't matter which action you choose. It's all kind of like a bonus. And those three production phases, oh, they all feel like Christmas because you're getting stuff. The components in the game are, mm, okay, you've got a paper-thin player board, that's not really a problem. I do like the domes. Uh, the upgraded buildings, which means when you're stacking those uh, thingies, they are tend to slide off of each other if someone bumps the table, but you've got your player aids, your cheat sheets. Uh, most of the explanations on the cards is done in uh, icons, which are pretty clear, but there's also text on the card, so that's pretty well done. There's not much player interaction, except for the blocking of the action spaces. The game is about building and not about destroying, which is definitely a plus for me. Sure, a player might block the action you wanted to do so badly, but that's something that will happen in any worker placement game. The government contracts will force players to see how the rest is doing and calculate what they need to do to stay ahead. And those special end game scoring cards are unique. So if someone grabs the one you were working towards, yeah, then you were too late and you should definitely have paid more attention to what the others were doing. But you're mostly focused on your own board and on your own puzzle. The only big thing you need to be aware of is the time. The box says 40 minutes per player, but I have had four, all of my four player games came in over four and a half hours. There's so many choices and combinations of choices you can make and having one or more players in your group who like to overthink things might make this game too long. More than once I had to cut a teaching game short because it just took too long. But if you know that ahead of time you can make sure everyone is on board for the ride. Because once you set out for life underwater you don't want to drown mankind and leave it hanging and just stop. You will want to build more of the same upgraded buildings in each city because those buildings will produce more. But you want them all to be different for endgame scoring. Wow, I love it. I love it. So, a big recommendation from me for this heavy game by Vladimir Suchi. If you have any questions about uh, the rules, then please put them in the comments. I'll try to like, take a look at it and, and help you out there. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, vote in my polls to help me determine which game will be the next game that I will do a review about. My name is Dave Luza. Thanks for watching. When I was trying to translate Steelplast to my German friends, I googled it and the first entry to Steelplast says, Steelplast was a thin material used in the construction of walls. So I was like, whoa, this is old material. Only to find out that it was spoken by Lieutenant Georgi, who identified this material back in 2364 with his visor in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. I like stuff like that in games.